the first thing is to get the spark binaries uh, you can download the spark binaries from apache org and uh, use the download link to get it and it will uh, take you to the downloads page from where you can download the same okay so you need to select your preferred version uh, choose the package type and download the compressed file okay so we'll be using the version the latest version 3.1.2 so now let's go ahead and click the download button it should take you to this page and after that it will ask you to prompt uh, download and you can download the same uh, i'll try to download it into this folder okay try to create a folder called spark in your c drive and then download the tgz file the zip file here okay then after it downloads we'll go to the location and we'll try to unzip it okay so what we'll do is like uh, i use a tool called uh, 7 zip which uh, does the unzipping process pretty fast so once the extract is done uh, we'll be getting this folder structure so we'll be having all of the contents in this location so just make note of the location it's in the c drive i've just created a folder and i've got all of the contents here so the area of contention would be in the bin folder if you go into the bin folder we'll need to concentrate on two files okay so one is going to be PySpark and the other is going to be spark shell if you see uh, you'll be having a windows version as well as a shell version uh, say like if you're working in mac or linux uh, the setup is more or less simple where you're just going to directly uh, execute the shell version of this command okay so now for our uh, setup we'll try to go to the command prompt and try to execute the spark shell the spark shell deals with the scala version and uh, the pi spark version deals with the python version okay so now we'll try to execute the spark shell command okay so i thought it would start but now what are the issues like we'll need to set the hadoop home okay so for windows uh, we we'll need something called as a win utils to be set up uh, for this kind of an error uh, to not to occur okay so we we'll need to configure something called as win utils so what we will need to do is like we we'll need to go to the browser and we we'll need to check uh, this URL okay so there's a set of uh, libraries that's going to mimic the Hadoop environment in your Windows machine okay so what we need to do is like we need to check this version okay so this version here says uh, apache hadoop 3.2 okay so for this Hado apache hadoop 3.2 so we need to find the corresponding version so we'll try to get the 3.2 version or 3.2.1 version what i what i did was like i i downloaded the uh three point let me confirm that i just placed it in a folder called hadoop here okay so i just named it as hadoop home okay so i downloaded the structure here so whatever elements are in this folder will be in this okay so in the bin folder so if you download this this particular folder would be available here that's about it so this is what was expected and you will need to do one more thing what you need to do is like go to your environment uh, so if you read the error it, it's pretty clear if you read the error it's pretty clear so you need uh, it it isn't able to find something called as a hadoop underscore home so this particular environment variable is not set so what we need to do is like we need to copy this folder okay uh, so this folder and leaving the bin folder leaving the bin folder you'll need to set be careful that uh, you leave the bin folder okay i'm reiterating that point for a reason because whenever you execute something uh, in uh, spark uh, the hadoop home environment variable will be appended with the bin folder okay so the thing that you need to do is like i'll try to set it in my system variables if you do not have access for your system variables you need to set it in your uh, user variables okay so what i'm going to do is like name it hadoop underscore that's it that's about it okay yeah. hopefully this should work now since we've set up the environment variable so don't be puzzled if you are uh, facing an issue immediately uh, after setting the environment variable you'll need to restart your command prompt okay that's the default uh, behavior 
cool now we've got the code or we've got the environment setup awesome we switch over to spice park okay we are see, seeing both the variants here okay so that will help us to do a lot of comparisons right we were having some discussions on which is faster which was performing better all of those things will have uh, some work to do here so one catch here uh, you'll need to have python set up before this uh, you'll need to install Spy python if it uh, if it's not installed already in your machine so once it's installed only uh, this uh, particular feature will be able to run okay so just make sure that you install python as well and then you install PySpark. okay so that's understood that if you're having uh, to run PySpark, you'll need uh, python installed okay so as usual, our uh, execution is done. So if, if you get this message here, just a warning here, just press enter and it should be gone. Okay, you can start writing your code. So the same set of uh, logs or metrics are printed here. Uh, information about the Spark UI, uh, information about the Spark context, information about Spark session. We'll cover all of these things in detail. Okay, so just go through this for now. So now we'll quickly execute a PySpark application to see if our application is working fine. Cool, an RDD is, try to see what, yeah, so we created an RDD with this kind of an information. Uh, the syntax would slightly differ for Python and Scala. So that's the reason I have different uh, set of examples. So here again, the stage is computed, okay. So the Spark UI will not have the previous stage since we terminated the Scala runtime that will be terminated and a new Spark UI session will be available for this. Okay, this is with respect to the jobs that we are executing here. We'll try to quickly print this out. So as you see, this is a transformation where never an action is called, the stages are getting computed. Lazy computation. Cool. So you've got a setup of PySpark as well as Scala Spark in your machine. So after we've set up uh, PySpark to run in your command prompt, we'll just go ahead and see if it's able to run in any from any location. Okay, for that we'll just try because I need to set in another environment variable. So yeah, since it, uh, the environment variable for uh, Spark Home is not set, uh, it will not be able to run from any location. So we'll just add the Spark Home location uh, to the environment variables. For that we'll need to go to the Spark installation. Uh, so you say like uh, we'll go where it exists, where it exists. We'll go to the C drive. Uh, we'll go to the Spark location. So we'll copy this location. Yeah. So this is where the Spark directories exist. All the Spark commands by Spark and Spark shell exist. So we'll copy this folder. So we'll copy it and we'll go to the environment variables. So in the environment variables, there's a new variable that we'll try to introduce here. Spark underscore home and we'll append the path and we'll need to add it to the path variable so we need to edit it and just add it to the spark home slash variable uh, since i've already done it it's already present you can create either new and add the same thing or you can just edit it okay so just put percentage your variable name percentage slash pin to access the folders where pi spark and scala spark exist okay so once it is done We'll go ahead and so you always need to create a new command prompt to test it out because the old command prompt will fail with the same error. If you see here, it will fail. So we'll close that and create a new session and PySpark should work now. Okay, so the new instance of PySpark is working with the environment variable set. So as uh, discussed, we'll go to the next step of using PySpark using PyCharm which will enable us to use IntelliSense and uh, the other advantages like using all the methods that are available for each of the uh, libraries within PySpark. Okay. So this is the Spark UI. We can go through that as well a little later. So once this Spark PyCharm is set up, I'll uh, give an introduction about the Spark Web UI as well. Okay, for now we'll just uh, exit. Cool. We'll close the command prompt. We'll try to kick in with a new PyCharm instance. Uh, so I've installed PyCharm from this location. So if you go to the PyCharm uh, website in JetBrains, just uh, Google install PyCharm and you'll be given this link. You can click on it. 
and after that you can choose either professional or a community edition for professional there are some features available uh, but uh, for our initial tryouts and initial learnings we can go ahead with the community version so once you click on download it's going to ask for some details like in uh, email etc and then you can click on start download once you download and install it will be available uh, in your start menu after that you can uh, start it up okay so after you start it up i'll uh, give you the inputs on how to connect it with PySpark. okay so we'll close this for now so we have opened PyCharm. I'm going to create a new project. So once you create a new project, you will be given this option of pure Python. So we are not going into Django, Flask or web to python or Angular or any of the React sort of stuff. We are only going to deal with PySpark with respect to learning Spark. Okay, so we'll just give this a name. Uh, my setup PySpark. And we'll try to give it a new name once you start typing you'll be given a new set of requirements here so make sure you choose virtual environment here so there's a set of pipen and conda that will be available if you have uh, anaconda installed okay so once anaconda is installed you'll be getting that option as well but i don't want to uh, mess this or uh, combine this with my uh, data science environment so conda i use it for data science learning so i don't want to use that so virtual environment what does it mean is like for each project that you set up you'll be given a separate python uh, environment so it will not interfere so any libraries that you install for this python project or PySpark project will only be relevant to this particular project okay so for that reason you'll need to use a virtual environment pip also comes in with the same advantages but it also has some packaging advantages but i'll stick to virtual environment for now okay so if you see i've created a new project it will just create a virtual environment in this new directory called vn uh, as told at the start of the video like we've installed python 3.8 so once python is installed it will just refer to the uh, existing interpreter location automatically so my python installation is in this location python 3.832 uh, and it will refer to the executable in that location you can even change that uh, if possible but uh, uh, you can also change it you by pressing this drop down or cho cho choosing the path okay but i'll stick to that so once you stick to that uh, you'll be creating a new environment for your for your project and uh, a python installation is applied to that okay i just wanted to explain in detail about this step because this is an important step here make sure that python is installed and pyspark in is installed as well as hadoop home as well as jdk as told at the beginning of the video before your pyspark setup we've already done the command line setup so you will have to make sure that all of those are installed as well your python installation your jdk home uh, your spark home as well as your spark libraries okay so now we'll go ahead and create this new environment using this environment ignore this existing interpreter for now so it will ask you to create it in a new window we'll do it in a new window so that we can start afresh so there's only one key point here um, where you need to make sure that you connect to a python interpreter and make sure that pyspark library is installed in that path so initially when these things are starting what happens is like all of the packages will be reinstalled okay so it will take some time so our uh, packages are installed if you see at the bottom of the screen all of the indexes would be updated with the latest libraries for each of the virtual environments okay so this is a new project a virtual environment we'll try to go ahead and create a simple word count example uh, we'll go into more details later uh, a detailed project or a detailed data source handling kind of a project later but let me quickly word count this is my new file name i already have some code set up uh, so let me have it okay so these things will ask you to set up certain things we'll go into these things a little later but before that i'll try to install one new file here okay so let me create some data directory and within the directory, I'll create a text file. Uh, file count one, two, three, dot txt. 
within the txt file i need to put that some value we'll put the same value we don't need to do anything we'll just put the same code here we'll close it up so this is the path so for copying this path what we'll do is like we'll just uh, uh, show an explorer or there's an even better option show file path okay once you get the file path you can just paste it here this thing throws an error just change the separators file directory separators yeah so once this is done this should be okay so now our environment should deal with the pyspark environment so once you hover over it it will give you an option of installing pyspark okay as simple as that okay but i don't want you to do that but rather an important step is like go here i'll show you how it should be done go to file go to settings go to this project setting which is like my spark my setup by spark just click on this link here you don't need to do any other changes go to your python interpreter okay so here you see that pip and setup tools are already installed these are the packages that are already available so if you want to add a new package uh, you can go ahead and type by spark okay so once you do this you can see all of the packages that are available for it we'll only deal with by spark for now Okay, I will just click on install package. It will take some time and you can even specify the version. So I think we are using the 3.1.2 version. You can very well use that. So it will take some time. So once it is done, you will be able to import all of the packages here. Okay. So let's wait for a moment. So after we do that, I'm just going to uh, run the program using the run command and we'll see how it goes and i'll also tell you another way in which we can code so that uh, we make use of all of the advantages of pycharm okay now the package is installed i've specified the version so now if you check here pyspark is installed okay now press on ok and now you see all the error messages have gone okay and now you see a play button is there as well so you can run it what does it say? So it says, yeah. Okay, so the problem is, okay. okay. Copy paste error. We'll just save it. We'll try to run it now. Hopefully it should work. So you can either remove this if you want to uh, view the Spark UI. Okay, so I'll I'll show you that as well. And you can also try each of these using the terminal. Okay, so in the terminal, if you try, you can execute your code like you're doing it in a uh, command prompt. Okay, so like it's counted all of the code and it's executed. So it's pretty easy here. So you can package this. You can use it to run it uh, using the cluster mode. Everything you can use this Python file. So this is a PySpark running working code. Okay, so we'll quickly see another version of this. And before that, I'll try to run it and show it to you we'll try to run it in the terminal okay so here what we need to do is like you need to go to the python console okay so if you go to the python console so i just wanted to show you another way so first thing is like install the binaries or import the binaries okay so once you do that you'll be able to view it okay so the advantage what i want to show i'll show it in the next step uh, a new session is created, a Spark session is created uh, with all the cores that are available for me. And if you see here, you see all of the variables popping up, popping up. It will be available. You don't need to worry about anything. This is the one I wanted to show. So it's going to show your Spark session. So what are the variables? What are the configurations? Everything you can see here. Your Spark context. So what is your application name? So your parallelism. So number of threads is 8 and your environment okay so which version of python you're using 
okay so when you go into more complex applications lot more complex details will come into the picture okay so you are using only one udf here your spark session is registered and all of the variables related to that uh, related to that is available here okay so you can quickly go ahead and even view the data frame details okay so now when you read a text it's by default going to be a data frame yeah so you can see all of that available here so you don't need to explicitly go ahead and see type of data frame or so if you're using a notebook like jupyter or, or if you're using data bricks you will need to explicitly go and do stuff okay but here it's going to show all of these things your columns your data types or types of your columns your number of rows each value in your row everything okay so now since we've not done any action yet we will not be seeing the output okay so all of the components that are associated while creating a data frame will be available here okay the schema is a struct type so automatic uh, schema resolution is shown here so we don't we didn't even specify what schema it is okay it's automatically resolved in by spark okay so we'll see the code execution now the final action is getting executed we should be seeing the output now once you do the show method a stage is calculated and now i'll go to the spark ui okay so where it will be is like the spark context yeah sorry for the delay it it is available in the spark context so each spark session is going to be referred to a spark context and within the spark context you will be given your uh, url okay your ui spark ui web url it's going to look uh, refer to my uh, host name okay it's nothing but the local host so you just copy value here go to your browser cool now your spark ui is available okay what i wanted to say was like you can remove the host name okay so now all of the jobs that have been executed as part of this session this particular station session will be available here with all of the stages okay uh, so each stage so this stage was skipped so it doesn't have any value so this is a completed stage so a completed stage will have its own DAG visualization, uh, its own metrics, the number of tasks that were executed, what was the shuffle that happened. So all of these details, I'll try to put it in another video, how shuffling happens, how much of data was shuffled, etc. We'll see the number of executors. I just have one PC running, so it's just a single node cluster. So that's just my PC running with this kind of a storage memory that was used only 68 KB out of the 366. Uh, MB that was available is used and uh, you can also see how many how, how the code gen or the spark sql optimization uh, the whole stage code gen all of these things will be explained here okay so how many data was written how many shuffle records were shuffle records were shuffled and what kind of an aggregation was done etc so we've not done any streaming so that's about it. so this is a small overview of the spark ui as well okay so this is what i wanted to show you with respect to uh, setting up uh, PySpark with pycharm and your command line okay so there's another video with respect to the scala version but this is specific to the uh, python version so what i'll do next is like i'll try to put in an exercise where i'm going to explain all of the functions from data frames to data sets to rtds and go into things like uh, concepts like even like uh, using a window function and uh, try to set up a broadcast variable or do some kind of accumulators so i'll try to bring in all of the concepts into a single project or say like i'll try to bring in a data set from kaggle and try to execute the code using that okay so whatever topic is trending for now say i'll try i'll try to bring in the coronavirus data set uh, i've seen a lot of data sets pertaining to coronavirus so we'll try to work on that we'll see uh, for a particular country say uh, whether it originated in china korea or in india or wherever so we'll try to go there and see the data pertaining to that country based on the data set i'll try to do that project okay so hope you like this video uh thanks for now uh please keep liking my videos and subscribe to my channel thank you signing off ashwin